Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. Thanks for joining us. In this video, I want to take a look at a newer feature in Power BI Desktop, and that is the DAX Query View. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do here, so stay tuned. Before we begin, do you want to learn more about DAX or Microsoft Fabric? You can go to prag.works forward slash Mitchell40 and save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription to over 100 classes. Now, on to our video. All right, so to get started, the first thing that we need to know is in order to leverage the DAX query view inside of Power BI Desktop as of the time of this video, this is a preview feature that you do need to enable. I believe this feature came out in February of 2024, but make sure that you have at least a newer version if you don't see this option and you don't see this in the preview features. So inside of Power BI Desktop, inside of Options, you've been there before, I'm sure, what you wanna do is go right here and inside of the preview features, you're going to go right here and you're going to turn on the DAX query view. And turning on and enabling the DAX query view is going to give you the functionality that we're talking about today. So what is the DAX query view? I've actually taken a little bit of look, look at this in some of my previous videos when I was talking about debugging DAX and some of the capabilities and some of the things we can do. And so that's absolutely one of the big use cases for the DAX query view is this capability of being able to look at the DAX code, kind of test it out and debug it, make changes on the fly, and if you like those changes, you can accept them or you can essentially reject them. Very, very big part of what we're gonna be taking a look at today. The other thing I wanna take a look at with DAX query view is being able to see a lineage of all of your DAX measures and how they're tied together. If you've been working in Power BI for any length of time, then you've probably done something like created a measure, use that measure in another measure, and then effectively use that measure in another measure. Am I right? Well, when I'm working with a customer and I'm trying to help them solve a problem and we're seven measures deep in this problem and I'm trying to understand what's going on, I have to look at that measure, see what measures are being used, and then we have to go back to that measure, see what measures are being used in it, and go back to the prior measure. And so there's this this breadcrumb, this trail that's very difficult to keep up with. So what if we could see all of that in a single view? We can. I love this feature. This is in the DAX query view. Let's jump right in and let's take a look. So back in Power BI Desktop, once you've enabled this preview feature, there's going to be a fourth option over here on the left. So we have the report view, the table view, the model view, and now we have the DAX query view. And I'm going to open that up. Whenever you open this up for the very first time, there's gonna be some comments in here and there's gonna also be like an evaluate statement. Now, what does evaluate mean? I'm not gonna dive deep into DAX as a query language. I'm not going to do that today. However, what evaluate essentially means is evaluate is like a select clause if you are familiar with SQL. It's, it's the beginning of your DAX query um, to return the result as a query. Writing DAX as a query is significantly different, if you will, than just writing DAX as a functional language where you build individual measures. So this part can be a little complex. If you've worked with reporting services or let's call it paginated reports for Power BI, then you've probably had to do this. You've probably had to open up like DAX Studio and you've had to write this as a query language. So what I wanna show you here though is that we have this, this screen and you see we have this option to do a run. What I'm going to actually do is go over to my internet sales table and in this table I have all these different measures from all and they're not organized apologies there but if I come down to total sales right here and right click on it I get this option for quick queries quick queries and what I'm going to do is click on evaluate now notice that we have a bunch of different options we're going to take a look at all of these real quick so I'm going to say evaluate and what evaluate does is it runs an evaluate statement that then runs a statement to effectively return the total sales measure. So if I run it, what we get is the result down here. It's just the total sums, unfiltered by anything in the data model, not grouped, not filtered, not anything. Okay, perfect. So we use evaluate. Evaluate can be used in a bunch of ways, but we'll keep this super simple and we'll go along with this example. So now I can get rid of that. The next thing I can do is I can right click and do quick queries again, and I can say define and evaluate. Now, here's the benefit of doing define and evaluate. It allows me to see the result of the total sales measure right here in the DAX query view, but it also shows me the definition. What was the DAX code that was written to get that result? 
I love this capability here. And the reason for it is, if you've ever worked in Power BI Desktop in the report view, you write your DAX, you look at it inside the report visual, and you have to really close the formula bar to look at it. I love that it's right here and the results are at the bottom and it's adjustable because it's easier to make changes if you're using it here. So this tells me that my total cells is simply the sum of internet cells and then I'm using it down here below. Now, when I reference a measure, I don't really ever put the table name in front of it as a best practice. So I, can I remove that? Will it still work? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, it will. Now, there's another trick. This is, uh, this is extra, no charge. If I hover over this measure right here, you'll notice that when I hover over the measure, it also shows me the definition of it. That's pretty cool, right? Because now if you're doing a lot of stuff in here and as you grow and learn, you will be, that's pretty cool because I can, I can do that. Um, there's also this little option right here that says update model overwrite measure. What does that mean? What it means is that I'm, I'm, I'm doing an evaluate statement to see what the results are. And if I wanted to modify this measure in some way to see how it changes the results, and then I like those results, I can just click this button and it will literally change the measure in my model and everywhere that it's being used. So it's a way of saying, hey, I've tested it, I've evaluated it, I, I, I was able to test it without having to change the actual code, without commenting everything out like we would normally do. I like the result, let me go ahead and save that change. I love that feature and I love that capability. We're gonna do that in a minute. If I get rid of this definition here at the top, we're right back where we started, I can run it again and I still get my result because I'm still referencing that, I just don't have the capability of actually changing the measure and saving those changes, all right? So let's get rid of this. We've done two things now. I right clicked, I did quick queries, evaluate, define and evaluate. Now I can define with references and evaluate. Well, on this one, it's not actually gonna do anything. If I click on it, it looks exactly same as the previous option. This is the lineage that I was talking about though. So let's go find a different example. And I think the one I wanted to use was like a prior year, year to date sales. All right, now I'll probably have ones that are a little bit deeper than this one, but this one will get the job done. So with this one, I'm gonna right click on it, quick queries, and then I'm gonna say define with references and evaluate. Now, here's the deal. I have a total sales measure. I use the total sales measure inside of my year to date measure. So it's been, we're one more layer deep, right? And then I use the year to date measure inside of my prior year to date measure. So I'm three levels here on this measure. And so if I'm debugging this measure or trying to figure out why maybe the results aren't exactly what I would expect, then this is gonna help me find that result a lot faster than being back in the report view, going back through it, trying to figure out all the filters that have been applied at all the different levels. I love this feature capability because as somebody who works with a lot of different customers throughout the week with a lot of different models, this gives me very quick insights into exactly what's going on in the data model. So with that being said, I have total sales. The total sales measure is the sum of internet sales amount. The total sales measure right there is being used inside of year to date sales, which is another measure in my model. And you can see it being used right here. So you see how you can quickly go back and say, oh, I'm using total sales right here. What is that? Oh, it's the sum of internet sales. Easy to see, easy to understand. And then I built a measure for prior year, year to say, uh, year to date sales. And there's multiple ways you could write this measure. I get that, but I kept it simple. Calculate the existing year to date sales. And then with that, we're going to go ahead and go back to the same period last year. So that gets me my prior year, year to date sales. Now, down below, there's a little bit more going on with this summarize, right, uh, with this evaluate statement. So now it's returning three, all three of the measures, so I can see them side by side. Now, we don't have, we're doing some time intelligence here, but yet we don't have any uh, real filter context coming from the date. So, you know, year-to-date sales is gonna be capturing really probably 2010, right, the last date that's in this data model, and then prior years going back one year, and I don't have data for 2009, so, this really isn't doing a whole lot. But from a, you know, building out this kind of virtual table, we could go in here and do something like return date year, right? And then I could hit F5, similar to how you would if you were in Management Studio. I can hit F5 and now I can see the results by year and I can see that that looks really, really good. In order to really evaluate the year to date sales and the prior year to date, I could also add in something like the month, which, is gonna be pretty easy to pull up. There we go, the month right there, and then I could hit F5 again. 
And so this is how you would kind of build in the visualization, the debugging that you can do in the report view, but it's a little bit to me more intuitive, easier to work with. Now, I'm not done. I'm gonna show you, we got the lineage. How do we make changes? How do we modify it? How do we test some stuff out? Well, that's pretty straightforward. So this is actually working perfectly, right? If I go to July of 2006, it is properly going back and getting me the year-to-date sales up to July of 2005, 470. So I can look at the difference between the two years and I can get that delta. I can get that difference. That's great. But what if I didn't want to go back 12 months? What if I wanted to go back two years? Or what if I didn't want to use same period last year, I wanted to use date add. Now date add is exactly the same result as same period. Same period comes from date add, right? It's just a little syntax sugar to make it easier. But if I were to come in here and do date add, like so, I could do minus one and I could do year. This is exactly the same close that up. This is exactly the same as doing same period last year. The results are exactly the same. The performance is exactly the same. There is literally no difference whatsoever. And we'll see the same results here. So if I like that better, a little more versatile, maybe I understand it better, I could save it. But what if, what if we wanted to go back two years? We realized we don't want to go back one year. I had this happen a lot during this right after COVID period, working with a lot of schools where they said, hey, we want to look at testing scores, but we don't want to compare the first we don't wanna compare this year to last year because we know the scores dropped. We really wanna compare this year to two years ago. So if I wanted to do that, I could do something like this. I could come in and click minus two, and then I could hit F5. And now I would be, for 2007 July, I'd be going back and looking at 2005 July. So we're gonna to have to go a little bit further down, right? There we go, and it's exactly correct. So I've gone back. And if that's what I want, if I like that, if I've tested it out, I've evaluated, I'm like, this is awesome. Guess what I can do? I can save that change. And I save it by clicking right here. It's just above it. So I can change it right here, overwrite measure. It'll ask me, are you sure you wanna make this change? And of course I am. So this cannot be, this can only be undone with additional edits. In other words, I must, I have to go back in there. I can't control Z. So it's giving me a little warning. Update the model, let's go. All right. I updated it, I'm done, I made changes. This is great. Here's the thing, writing DAX like this is definitely more challenging. However, as you start to learn DAX and you get into writing more and authoring more intermediate and advanced DAX, writing more complex calculations, you're going to be building a lot of virtualization of tables anyway and then performing operations on top of those. So you're learning how to write DAX as a query language, very beneficial, very helpful. So take a look at this. I hope you like it. If you want more videos like this, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.